been a while since I've last done one of these. Yep. I thought it was enough time putting this off, and it was time to get back into work with the PlayStation demo discs. We are taking a look at probably one of the best of the interactive samplers, at least in my humble opinion, Interactive Sampler Volume 8. There is a lot of gems on this on this demo disc. Some some not so not so much gems, but others that are just that really define the PlayStation the original PlayStation as just one of the, the the console greats of its time. There's just quite a lot of good stuff on this, so let, I'm going to give you the quick rundown. Uh, I'm going to be playing these as I normally would in this sort of order, so we got Spire of the Dragon, which... I don't think Spire of the Dragon really needs any explanation. We've got NFL Extreme, which was a kind of like, I guess, a more arcade-style uh, football game. Don't expect to do very well at these. Never really been good at sports games. Medieval, uh, a, quite an underrated, an underrated classic for the PS1. Really good game. Gran Turismo, again, doesn't really need any sort of explanation. If, you, if you've heard of the PS1, you probably have heard of Gran Turismo. It was, it was a big deal, to say the least. We got Metal Gear Solid. This is the first appearance of Metal Gear Solid. I believe this is also in volumes 9 and 10. Uh, this one in particular, volume 8, is a, little bit, is a bit different for a very particular reason, which I will get into when I get to this game. And if you remember my old video, yeah, I got to, I'll have some explaining to do when I, uh, in terms of that. We got Test Drive 5, which is kind of which is a very dated racing game. I'll go into more detail when we get to that. Uh, Legacy of Kane 2 Soul Reaver. Uh, I think the last time I tried playing this, I managed to glitch out of the uh, out of the level, and yeah, it was uh, it was pretty interesting <laughs> to say the least. Like, I'm not expecting to do very well at these. Just a lot of these games, like. A lot of you guys might have grown up with these. I I was a very different kid. There's a lot of games that I just didn't grow up with. And me, part of the reason I'm also part of really into racing games and whatnot. We got Cool Borders 3, just a snowboarding game. First one, I think, that was developed when it was uh, being published under, by, under 989 Studios. We got videos for NFL, Game Day 99, NHL, Face Off 99, uh, Rugrats, Parasite Eve... A demo for Ninja, which I don't even remember from the last time I played this. I, I funny enough, WWF Warzone, a video for the PlayStation Underground CD, and some threads, which is basically clothing, uh, official clothing and stuff. But we will get to all those when we do, because we're just gonna go from top to bottom, which means we get to start with one of my favorites, Spire of the Dragon. So, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna just yeah, that's. I am correct in remembering. This is one of the first uh, demos that actually does allow the use of the uh, dual analog sticks because this was pretty much, I think, one of the first uh, interactive sampler volumes where analog sticks were pretty much commonplace because thanks to the DualShock. Uh, but the controls on this, are, of course, are very simple. It's Fire the Dragon. It's one of those games that really any age group could play quite, quite simply. But, you know, we even get like a little bonus, uh, a little splash here about... Uh, Universal Interactive Studios and developed by Insomniac Games. Of, of course, the the geniuses who would later go on to give to give pretty much one of the I guess in another sets one of the uh, future PlayStation mascots in Ratchet and Clank, as well as the excellent Spider-Man games on the PS4 and PS5. So, Spire, so Spire the Dragon, the dem this demo actually will appear quite a few times. I believe uh, volumes eight, nine, and ten all have this. But and whilst volume eight and nine, I believe are pr I think are identical. I believe volume ten is actually a later build demo. So uh, stay tuned for that because that'll be pretty interesting. If you if you happen to enjoy these videos, and if you do, please make sure to like and subscribe. Because I'm gonna be picking these back up more in a bit of full swing. Also, I don't know what's up with the all these kind of like li uh, these lines. I don't know if this is just a case of uh, the the uh, the effect of uh, putting the uh, the PGXP stuff on or not through Duck Station. I have no idea, but Duck Station is my go-to choice because it's pretty much the uh, the best PlayStation One emulator out there, and I will stand by that. Thank you for releasing me. Free the dragons in the artisan world, then seek out the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? That's all I can tell you. Those are kind of weird. You, you see, like you can see the bits in the in the back, just like the. It, it's almost like the textures are trying to be 
together, but there's like a little bit of gaps like they didn't fill in. Again, it's not the fault of it isn't the fault of the game. I think it's it might be an emulator thing. It's also an earlier build, so maybe there's part that's partially causing it. I don't know. I'll torch him. Go after some sheep first. Those little creatures release butterflies, which Sparks the dragonfly eats. Sparks protects you. Is that Phil Hartman? Could someone please uh, confirm if that's Phil Hartman or not? Thanks. I'm ho at least I'm hoping I'm getting the spelling his name. I'm pretty sure it's Phil Hartman in terms of uh, name. So yeah, this game I'm noticing it's not the most. There is some bit of fluid fluidity, but it's there's not a lot of like it kind of it kind of just a bit of a jolt with the analog stick. It's not very fluid. It doesn't feel very fluid. I think they did improve that in the later builds. I get I don't remember off the top of my head to be 100% honest with y'all. So I'll just try to clear off some some of the stuff here, and then we'll move, and then we'll go to the next bits. It's been a while since I've actually played Spyro. I never, like, I've actually never even played the Reignited trilogy. Uh, I know that was me. That was a bit of a big deal for some. I just, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> nope, stop. <laughs> yeah, could. But I'm a bit. I'm pretty rusty at this. I'm not so. Yeah, we're not gonna worry. We're not gonna worry too much about it. It is. It's just a demo. This video is more just to show off the demos, anyways, rather than my actual ability. Because uh, I don't. Th I I want to say most people probably watch these for what's actually on the discs. Press the jump button twice to glide, and and don't be afraid. Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks, plummeting into prehistoric glaciers, crashing through all oh, that. Oh, that. It's like you have wings or something, so you could, you know, kind of just glide down. Actually, don't. To be fair, I don't even think there is there isn't fall damage in this game anyway. So. Yeah, I don't know, like. If this game is better with the controls than I'm remembering, then I think it may- I might have to look into my emulation settings. Also, yes, the music that you're hearing is the, is basically the title screen music. That does change- if you play the final game, you'll know that that's not the music that plays in the, uh, the main hub world here, or at least the first hub world. That does change. Uh, in the volume- not in the volume 9 demo. In the volume 9 demo, I think, is identical to the volume 8. Demo, but volume 10, as I said, is a later build, and in that demo, they actually do change it to the music that's used in the final build. And yes, this is basically a subtle, hey, wait till September. And yeah, here's, here's one of the worlds here. Is this, I think, the uh, little transitions here didn't didn't change that much. Oh dear, now you can see the uh, blue lines and stuff, so it really appears, it, it appears even more out of place now. That's, 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 that's fun. Yeah, I think after I'm done this video, I, I will over double check my settings just to be, just to double check. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I th I'm sure there's something I'm missing here. Like I, again, it's been a long time since I've really properly sat down and played this game. So, yeah, uh, don't ex don't expect miracles here, Pete, folks. As I was saying. <laughs> he had it coming. <laughs> but yeah, this, even, even like the final build of this and whatnot, like this game is just a lot of fun in general. Cause it's, again, it's one of the,
it's just one of those games that was just really easy to get 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 into and just properly enjoy. And you could even see by this point, be, this build was early enough that not exactly everybody, all the dragons you save, have uh, actual cutscenes and things where they speak and whatnot. This this guy, man. All right, so basically. We're going to be seeing this in the later volumes anyway, so I'm going to actually stop here so we can continue onwards. We're not spending, like, really long on this. I think I think I actually will go back to digital mode just just for one second. I'm just curious. Okay, we're, we're fine. NFL Extreme. Again, I'm not good with sports games. I didn't grow up with them. They're not really my thing. And yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of different moves and multiple screens for that, even too. And holy crap, looking at these screens again. They're low quality, man. Very low quality. Didn't matter back in 1998 because, you know, the the the, uh, the, the, the screens and stuff that people were playing on, it didn't, it didn't matter. You, you wouldn't have really picked up that stuff until uh, blowing it up on emulators and stuff years later, so... Eh. So yeah, I th I think there was I think there was a sequel to this as well, but at least you can actually take a look at like all the sorts of uh, all the sorts of players and whatnot. Yeah, pretty simple, pretty honestly pretty simple stuff, but it's it's kind of neat looking at that you can just. Uh, put put on a demo and take a look at how the uh, how these teams were like at, uh, circa 1998. God, I'm not gonna do all that. It's, I'm actually surprised you can even access that sort of stuff. No photos. So yeah, they didn't even. They, this demo didn't have photos of the players, and I mean, come on, Dan Marino not having a photo tells you something. Yeah, there's a lot of. I'm surprised just how many, how much stuff is here. For for being a demo, I'm very surprised. Okay, you can't do the season. That makes sense. Or the playoffs. Again, that makes sense. You can't do an exhibition, and I'm gonna guess, yeah, you could probably just choose any of the teams. It defaults to the Packers and Broncos, which would have been the, uh, the uh, and that year's uh, Super Bowl in 1998. I guess, of course, here I can just, I can just, uh, I choose who I want to be. I'm just gonna put it in the middle. Maybe, maybe I can just actually just let it be a rolling demo. I'm kind of curious to because I don't think I'm gonna do very well, and I'd rather show some footage of you know AI playing the game better than I'm ever gonna play it. So, welcome to NFL Extreme. Today's game is between the Green Bay Packers. Oh, this is oh, this actually looks pretty smooth. Well. Up until the it really gets into the players. He takes it, nails him. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you could see though, NFL Extreme was trying to be a bit more kind of like over the top and a, you know, a bit more comical and whatnot. So it was not meant to be realistic. To the house, baby. What is Whoa. he doing? Yeah, well, that's my question. What is he doing? He was already tackled down once. He doesn't need to be tackled again. That's just, that's just rude. I don't think he even. Stay down, chump. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, so at least you can get a, kind of get an idea of how this works. So, I wonder how many of you, any of you watching, how many of you actually played this game growing up? Curious to know. And yes, the voices and stuff makes this a bit hard for me to kind of get my thoughts out. So, oops. First and goal to go. Hot. 
See if the Packers can get a touchdown. Nope, that's incomplete. I'm gonna probably let, just let the timer run out. I'm guessing when the the quarter timer runs out, Second that ends the demo. Die. I want to guess. Oh, dude, fucking! Imagine watching up. football and the guy just jumps, does a front flip. It's happened, I think, unintentionally in Move games, but not deliberately like that. Oh. He whiffed it. Absolutely whiffed it. Just embarrassing. Oh, they're going to go for a field goal. So they get the three points for a field goal, at least. And... See if the Broncos get a touchdown now. Holy cow. <laughs> Jesus. This is just This is just one of the things about that about that period of the nineties that Don't get up. You just won't see anymore. You just won't see something as much like this. It, it was very much a product of its time. Second and short. Hot Throws! That was almost out of bounds. Just, but not quite out of bounds. Red, First and 11. Hot. Way to go, you uh that really that really worked out in your favor. Except it didn't it didn't work out at all. Oh, and there we go. That's the, that is time. So yeah, I'm gonna guess that's probably just it for the demo because uh, I think we're gonna be headed back. Yep, we are heading back. So that's NFL Extreme, though. Anyways, something I can actually at least play instead of just watch Medieval. I say instead of just watch, but y y you get the idea. So we got uh, our uh, side back step, uh, camera zooming, charge while running, def and you can also use that for defending and special move attack, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we even get another one of these with uh, less information uh, compared to the Spire of the Dragon demo. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, this game was this game was uh, quite a lot of people really enjoyed this game back in the day. It was just one of those PS1 things that I think kind of got forgot for a number of years. I think there was a sequel. I want to say around 2000, I think. And then just for years after that, it was it was just more of kind of a a point in time. And then I think they did release the uh, kind of like a a new version on, on PS4 some years ago. I would have to look into it. I could be remembering wrong. I, you know, it's one of just it's just one of those things for me. But I remember playing this demo uh, in the old, in the old, in the old version of this video, all those years ago, and I remember quite liking it. I don't remember if I was any good at it or not. Probably not. Oh, and uh, I'm not getting analog stick control, so I'm just gonna, just gonna stick to the D-pad. Okay, so this one at least, control-wise. It feels fairly smooth. Uh, at least I'm getting good use of the D-pad here. Oh, we got a pot of gold. Can I actually read? Is this something I can read? Oh, okay. Welcome back to your beloved Galomir. The stinking dead have risen up to dance for the lifeless living, and they want to do it over your dead body. Oh, dear. Man, that looks generic. <laughs> Those zombies there. Okay, that's that's probably it's it's probably not it's probably not something to worry to really worry about too much. It's just it's probably just part of the charm a little bit as well, because it's you know it's meant to be campy, it's meant to be you know one of those sort of things. Get back here. Gonna make the undead dead 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 plus. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think the hands they're doing they don't seem to they don't seem to bother you. Yeah, that's the thing I, I think the thing I'm liking about this is this it's 
you know, I'm kind of understanding a little bit of what I'm doing pretty, pretty quickly. And the thing with me, just, you know, I mean, cause I'm, you know, self admittedly a very slow learner and I make a lot of very comical mistakes with these sort of games but even with this it's I like how it's kind of you know just giving me all this stuff and it's not like being very overly egregious about it or it's being you know uh, so, to the point where it's like you know a bit uh, overwhelming it's pretty it's pretty simple and I like that I like demos that uh, really focus on that sort of just really kind of gra uh, uh, slowly just building you in hey don't let zombies get you down tend the, those wounds by stepping into this fountain of rejuvenation very nice and that's the stone that unlocks that and I am Oh, I see. Okay, so to go faster, you have to double tap. You gotta, you gotta double. You have to uh, the double tap one of the one of the one of the buttons, and then you can just run. Okay, that's simple enough. Okay, and I don't even have to swing. It'll just it'll just activate. So I got another one of those things, which means it's probably another door I gotta open. Probably this one. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Damn, that actually felt kind of cool. Getting just... <laughs> just being able to just run at them and just swing at them and take no damage. Can I jump into... Can I jump into here? Hang on. No, I do not think I can. That's just background. I thought maybe the, the glowing purple thing would have been something to take a look at. But I am going to say no. Also, yeah, you could probably notice the music here is not particularly very long. It has repeated itself several times. What do we got here? Can I... There we go. Shoo! Away with you! The living world lies through this way, but the gate is locked. No key, no open. So I just gotta find the key. Like the other two that I've already have to open with keys. Kind of funny that they mention that now when I've already done that twice. I see the chalice there, kind of the percentage, I guess, says how much I've uh, eliminated. Oh! No, you come back here. Thank you. Yep, and there it goes, looping again. Come back here. Oh, I can just hold it, and it won't... Okay, cool. That's not one of the things where as soon as it gets to that, it auto-goes. Auto yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Such a sad, sad fate that you had to in, that you had to deal with. I feel like maybe I'm missing something because that is a bit too tall for me to jump on. Oh, there. Okay, yeah, that's what I was missing. The little platform there. And refill my health. I wonder how many games that by this point in 1998 had those sort of things where there was just ways to just kind of replenish your health like that. Like, like obviously, you know, med kits, health packs, or little pickups and whatnot, but stuff where you could just kind of sit there and it just kind of uh, brings all your health back. I wonder how many games did that. All right. Oh, and it looks like we actually got more of the demo. It's not just, it's not quite over yet. But are we gonna? Are we going to get the same music? So even from the shackles of death, my old enemy Sir Fortesque pursues me. You're too late, Fortesque. Already my army have risen from the grave. You will never leave this necropolis. Ha ha ha! No, I will not put energy into the laughter. Okay, sure. Cause that makes sense. 
Then again, I guess, you know, it's supposed to be magical stuff anyways. Like, it's not supposed to make sense. Can I... Wait. There we go. Some obstructions can be smashed down with clubs and certain other weapons. Try experimenting. I... Oh, I can't... I should probably be rotating the camera if I can't see. Yeah, now the percentage has reset because I'm in a, a different part of the... Uh, in a different area here. Are you sick of that? Are you sick of that musical loop yet? Because it's I've heard it how many times they really should have thought about maybe putting a longer loop in or at least something else It's so short I get it's a demo, but come on. Oh my god I don't exactly know what that was about but uh You know what? I didn't. It's. I didn't die. I didn't get hurt from it. It didn't kill me. So. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't want to get hit by the rocks. Don't get hit by the rocks. Ow. Oh. Oh dear. Uh. Oh, I found a copper shield. Ow. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, hey, I use my life bottle. Okay, that's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to worry about. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, shit. No, no, no. Ugh, shit. You son of a bitch. How many times am I going to be able to get away with that, though? Yeah, you can tell uh, where my experience, or sorry, inexperience is starting to come in. <laughs> oh, no. We have failed the master. We give our lives. The way the fact they're all like lit up like that, I thought they were gonna explode for a second. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and now we got the hilltop mo mausoleum. I'm not even gonna pretend I understand what I'm s I just said there. Oh, look at these bat. Who are these bastards? They take a few hits to go down. You know, no big deal. It's fine. That's just how it is. Okay. I feel like there is something I need. Maybe it's here. Oh, I got a club. Okay, well that is not doing it. Did I miss? Oh God. Oh, okay. I see that the club can uh, can break these. Ah, yes. Okay, secret passage. Yeah, I can just fucking, can fucking, fucking boop, just get flattened. Thank you. I don't think I actually got this far in the original. The last time I played this. Oh. What am I doing? Like, you know, there are spikes. They are going to hurt. Maybe I should, you know, do this. Oh, I got too close. I can't open that right now. 
Oh, I see. You have to add something there. I, I do, yeah. I need a moon rune. I don't. I do, and I do not have the moon rune. The moon rune right, right now. That's something I could also need to be honest is health. I don't have a lot of that left. Can I play? I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. Is that the moon rune? No, that's the, that's an earth rune. Oh god, the floor is collapsing. Oh god. Oh god. God. Yeah, jeez. Jeez. Nope. Nope. Oh, and I guess that's the end of the demo. Because now we're just getting uh, these little the little graphics they put for uh, to hype up the game, the full game. So that actually went on for quite a bit, but it's decently enjoyable. It's it's a sort of game that I could probably uh, enjoy as like a as like a, as, as 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 an own uh, session. Maybe one day if I you know get more regularly into streaming again, I could probably do some like alternate streams, and this might be a good candidate game. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to consider. I'm not entirely sure yet. Anyways, Gran Turismo. This was in Volume Seven as well, and I believe, if I remember correctly, the demo is exactly the same from Volume 7. So, if you played Volume 7, then you already know what to expect. But I imagine with most people, they, you know, growing up, you didn't exactly have, like, all the different volumes and stuff, because these came with, these came bundled with the PlayStation. So, you know... Yep, so just going. So let's just show you the quick business. You, you, you get your arcade, you go into single race. You can see all the all the sorts of vehicles that are in the in the game, but of course just like just like before most of them are inaccessible. Which is why you have this uh, this section here with the available cars, which includes a NSX Type S0, Chevrolet Corvette, and the, a race modded Subaru Impreza. I think I did use this last time, so let's go with the NSX this time around. These two shades of red are so similar, but car really does have a lot of colors. Let's go for this color here. They're kind of like the green. I'm gonna try manual. I have to figure it out quickly because I didn't really look what the uh, the controls are for changing the gears, but I I'll probably figure that. I could probably figure that out pretty quickly, to be totally honest. So I'm still not. I was still not getting uh, analog controls, but okay. So it is the. Uh, the shoulder buttons, L2 and R2. Simple enough. I never really used manual with these earlier Grand Turismo games because for some reason it always felt a bit weird to me, but obviously as I'm getting a little bit older and I'm trying you know, try to get used to using manual in a bit more often games, uh, yeah. Oh no. It's, it is one of these things where I should probably, uh, probably try to get a feel for it. And yeah, it seems like I could, I could easily do that. I thought maybe do like a quick shift there could get a little bit more swing. And yeah, this is on the difficult difficulty and I've already got a little bit of a comfortable lead. So, so far, so good. And yeah, like I said before, if you played volume seven or you had volume seven, uh, this demo is exactly the same. So not, nothing particularly different. Uh, Grand Turismo also appears on the volume nine sampler but unlike volume 7 and 8 that the volume 9 demo is actually different so yeah that one actually you, you know that's the one where it, I think it's actually based off a of different builds this one uh, I think this one is uh, takes a lot for some of the bits from the Jap the Japanese build because if you if you know anything about Gran Turismo the font there for like time and and record and whatnot it's a lot more kind of squared off whereas in the final builds for the U.S. and PAL releases it's more rounded. Of course, uh, you still get you still get your uh, your replay and stuff. We can get my uh, get my details with that uh, square. 
also I always found it pretty interesting this, this is uh, you you don't even if you like look at the other cars here it's all the info oh you get is still coming from uh, from that oops I accidentally pressed select. That's that's the button to go back, but that's fine because we finished. We did finish the race anyways, and there's 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 nothing else. There it, it would just be you do the race again and just keep keep redoing it. What's really weird about it is I noticed that the some of the PAL demos for for that they put a timer on it, so like you you can only race for an amount of time, and then once the timer hits zero, the race is over. It's like why? Why? It's only a two lap race around a, a, a track that's already fairly short to begin with. Why not just you know let them do the two laps makes no sense to me i don't know why they would do it like that but whatever metal gear solid no this game was a massive deal this game was pretty damn huge at the time it, everybody was talking about it, it was going to be one of those just like honestly just one of those games and I didn't I didn't play it growing up again i was just one of those kids i didn't i wasn't really presented with it and as a result i just i I don't have the experience or the know-how around the game that a lot of other people do, so sorry. You're about to play a demonstration version of Metal Gear Solid. It did, oh, it doesn't stay on long enough. Basically, what it's saying is it's not a final build, and in fact, in this particular build, the Volume 8 demo, the voices are actually still their original Japanese voice actors. So you'll see English dialogue, but they have uh, the, the voice actors from the Japanese release. They actually... If I remember correctly, in the Volume 9 demo, they actually do update it so that it has the English-speaking voices to go with, well, the English font, the English text and everything. So, I, well, last time I played this game, I did such a terrible job. I was really bad. I'm not even gonna, I'm like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I, again, I never grew up with this game and my footage was, to be honest, really embarrassing. So actually, before I started recording this, I actually off screen played this demo to myself just to see if I could reach the point where, you know, the demo would end. Because I've seen videos about where the demo ends. And yes, you can hear the Japanese voices. But I would get up to, I would watch videos like where it would end, and I would thought, if I could at least get to a certain point, I'd be like, okay, that'd be good enough, uh, and I'd feel more confident with even doing this video because I was, my original playthrough was so fucking bad. People were really calling me out for it, rightfully so. It was really, it was really bad. So I thought, let's just see how far I could get, and I actually managed to get to the, uh, to the end point without actually without even getting noticed and I didn't think I was gonna do that so I'm hoping that now that I'm recording this that I can repeat that but no promises again though I do like to stress with these videos these aren't meant to be like really proper gameplay videos this is meant to kind of just show what these demo discs provided at the time because I think demo discs are really interesting and I can't make any guarantees that I'm gonna be good in any of these so that's really what it comes. That's just really what it comes down to. I'm just doing the best that I can. If the footer, if my best looks to be really bad, I can really only apologize for that. And yeah, this <laughs> is a long. Even even with this, it's just it's footage. And yeah, so next time we do see this, it, sh it will be English voices, and that's probably when I will, in the Volume 9 demo, is when I'll probably shut up. I'm only speaking because I don't understand Japanese. But yeah, like I said, this game was such a big deal. This, people were raving about this game, like it was going to be just one of these you need to buy a PlayStation to experience something like this because it was it was really kind of combining the idea of gameplay with like cinematics like giving it a movie feel like an interactive movie with more like but not the sort that you saw with like uh, in like arcades and, and whatnot and stuff more something more grounded more detailed more unique and that's what this was and there's a reason people got excited for this, and a reason why people love this game. It was it was something special for a lot of people, and it just was one of those things. It's a shame that Konami uh, ripped out ripped the heart of, of all that away, but that's what Konami does because fuck Konami.
So yeah, Metal Gear Solid then. I will show the options because that does work in the demo. It's basically just your sound, your, your vibration, which isn't working for me right now. I won't worry about that. <laughs> uh, I'll have to I'll look into that off screen. And if I can fix it for myself for volume nine, I will. But if I don't, it's not exactly a big deal. Also, you gotta press circle. Circle uh, circle is the button that goes forward in Japanese release games because circle is kind of like the com. Uh, in Japan, circle is seen as like a confirmation, like go ahead button, and and the cross is like a uh, go back or or cancel button. They uh, switched it around uh, for North America, probably because I'm guessing uh, the where the buttons are placed was gonna be more familiar uh, if it was that sort of way. And it's although it is funny because we used triangle to go back in a lot of these games back then. And then we made it so that circle goes back by around PSP days. And it's been like that ever since. And I don't think they're going to change. I don't think they're going to change. I think that's just, I think, I think part of the idea was to kind of standardize it too, because, you know, Xbox and GameCube uh, use like Xbox and GameCube Dreamcast and, you know, the later Xboxes and later Nintendo consoles, they use, they use like, uh, a and B, so that placement, I think, was why they might have done that. Because it just feels more familiar to do it like that. Really interesting hearing the Japanese voice for Snake, because it's such a different take. It's such a different feel, a different... A different sort of take on the on the characters voice wise because because if you remember if you remember how the voice was in uh over here where we had david Hayter, it was just it was it was a, such a different take and people like that because it gave it was unique it, it was a bit silly maybe personally but people liked it, and it was very memorable. And I think when you can make it, and it's not like he was bad, like the hater was bad at delivering lines. He was very, very, very good at delivering lines. That's why, despite the way his voice might have been, that's why people really liked him. He was just, he was really good at what he did. Okay. Actually, no, wait, no, 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 no. Let me pick up the ration. I should have probably used the ration. Do I actually have like a, a gun on hand? Start with no, I don't. I just have like a cigarette, and a scope, but I'm not gonna use the cigarettes. And I, I don't think I need to use that. I'm sure there was something I was like forgetting to do when I'm, when I was being noticed, and it's, it's whatever, it's, it's fine. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a lid. I'm gonna give it a little bit longer, but I'm gonna see if he actually goes off the screen, and then go. Okay, well he's he's going quite a bit. F he's he's going further. I just I want to, cause like I said, I actually man, I did off screen. I swear to God, I managed to do it without getting noticed. I just I think just I, as my short term memory tends to do, it forgot how I did it. I think he's gonna. I, okay, if I remember, I think he's gonna gonna go that way. Okay, yes. So now what I can now what I can do. Oh, I probably should have, uh... Probably should have, uh, crawled there. Okay, he's already going away. That's fine. But now I just gotta- now I just gotta wait for the platform. See, I- 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 I just- it was just- it was just a bad run. I- 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 I can do this. We can- we can get to the, we can get to there, and then we can get- to, we can show the, uh, then we can show the later bits. It's fine. Should be here shortly. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna go over here just to be safe. No, 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 no. Don't, not yet. They're gonna, they're gonna like look at each other and then they're gonna go, they're, gonna, they're just gonna be facing there, facing there. Okay, good. Now we can go. See, I got this, no big deal. 
you can really tell I haven't grown up with this game. Just doing the best I can, folks. I, I like that's all I can promise with these videos. I'm gonna be bad at some of these, and that's just, unfortunate. That is just how it's gonna be. I am no, I am no master of video games. I am just someone who likes video games. It's the reason I mostly play racing games, folks, because that's the one genre I know I can do fairly well. And plus, you know, my passion for cars and motorsports and all that stuff, that's also fairly obvious. Okay, so if I'm gonna... I think I still remember how I approached uh, the second bit coming up here. So if, if I can just redo that, then we'll be good. We'll, we'll be perfectly fine. The only mistake I made, at least that second time around, is I forgot to crawl over the puddle, which is what I should have done, because then that way they don't hear the puddles and get alerted, or get, not alerted, suspicious. I'm just gonna, of course, just let this play through. By the way, the VR training thing mentioned that's that's an actual thing in the final in the, the like the VR the VR missions and whatnot. That's in the I believe that's in the final game. I think that is in the final game, right? The VR stuff. I almost want to say there was like an expansion thing too, where they had like way more, like they kind of themed it around all the VR stuff. Please feel free to correct me on that one, because it's uh, one I'm not entirely cer I'm not entirely certain on. And yeah, even again when I was going earlier about like how big this game was to people, that's why they put this demo in, despite the fact the voices were still Japanese. Like, like, this was the sort of game where just people, they wanted to see this game. They wanted to get their hands on it and play it. And that's why, even though this demo is still has the Japanese voices, that's why they threw it in. Because they, they knew people would be interested, and boy howdy were they. Okay, so once this cutscene ends, I I remember what I did, I think. Yeah, more talking. それにしてもこの嵐の中で範囲道を飛ばすなんて無茶ね。誰だ。ああ、まだ紹介していなかったな。ソイトンテーダーと無線機システムの開発者。<笑> Forgot how much I forgot how much talking and just stuff like that there is. It is meant to be a cinematic experience after all. Just silence. Silence. Very frank for a train killer. Some people are just like that, you know? I mean... To be fair... I did have to sort of learn this in that first bit, but it would make sense in the sense of the story for it to be exp to be properly explained as well. Nano machine, son. 
彼からテロリストたちの情報を聞き出せもし生きていたらの話だがな Curveball they throw there if he's alive that is I like that スネークソリトンレーダーは気象には影響されないけど敵に発見されると使えなくなるわうん簡単に妨害されてしまうんだソリトンレーダーはもはや既存技術なのそれと音響共鳴の強い空間でも使えないから気をつけて君の行動はレーダーを介して我々がモニターしている何かあれば無線機を使ってくれ分かった寂しくなったら連絡する無理をしないでスネーク何かあれば私たちに相談して潜入データの記録も私が担当してるのセーブしたい時は私に連絡する<笑> Sorry, right now, so. 収録セーブ用の専用回線よ覚えていてね今回も双眼鏡以外の武器装備は全て現地調達だドクターに丸裸で It's not that naked. 何もかも取り上げられたからな。Apart from the lack of weapons. わかったわ。生きて帰れたら、私を調べていいわ。それは夢のある話だ。悪いが、タバコだけは携帯させてもらったよ。どうやって胃の中にね。君が胃液を抑える薬を入れてくれたおかげだ。タバコなんか、何の役にも立たないわよ。そうとは限らんよ。Yeah. Okay, so here's what I remember is that, and the reason this is just playing out. I'm not doing. I'm not doing this. I'm just letting. I am just letting it take care of itself here. <laughs> Pineapples. You can take either of the ducts, by the way, whether it's the, the first floor or the second floor. We're going to be going for the second floor because that's the one I did、uh, when off screen. Oh, and of course, now my cat decides to show up as I'm recording this. Come on, cat, I'm recording here. <laughs> You're going to get in the way of the screen. Hey. Sorry, bud, but I gotta move you for a period of time or else I'm not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. I know. You're just being a curious cat, is all. <laughs> Sorry about that. She's a good cat, though. Okay, so here's what I remember doing I, w I went on up to here, and、uh, I basically. I basically made sure not to, to get noticed here, because there is somebody who does come this way. Okay, now, okay, so I know I cannot take a cover there because there's no thing there. See here. Yeah, someone does come up here, I remember. I don't think they come up this way where I am, but I don't remember, to be honest. And, then, and, that, and now I remember that there's the camera there. Which I don't want to be picked up by the camera. That always goes like kind of left and right. So as soon as it starts kind of going away, is when I want to.、Uh, it's when I want to not be noticed by it. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now. Okay, and then there is going to be a guard here. The guard kind of waits around here. He doesn't come down the stairs, though. So that's. So once he starts kind of walking away, is when. Oh, I was too quick. I'm gonna see if I could. So, yeah, I was a little too quick there. I guess to be fair, having a bit of this would be good. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm still not dead. Yeah, you can tell that this is not my specialty. Oh, I think he's. Nope. <sighs> Damn it. 
damn it. Okay, that works. Or not. <sighs> yeah, I should be dead now. Okay, so just to be certain, I can, I'll bring out the box. Oh no. They're too alert. They're too alerted by my presence at this point. Oh. Go away. Come on. Go away. Please go away. Thank you. Okay. Now I can... Why are they calling me now as I'm near the duct? I'm right next to the vent, buddy. Come on. Let me let me go to the into the vent. Okay, Buddy, that's what I'm doing. I was actually about to do that, but you decided to call me at that at that very moment, which is inconven which is inconvenient. Okay, and now we're in the vent, and that's where the demo ends. And look, the fact that I can at least get to this point now with this updated, improved version of this interactive sampler video compared to the one I did years ago, just seeing this screen makes me feel so much better. Like, honestly, just really. Just gonna press the two buttons together because it mentions to press select and start in order to... in order to exit the demo. And please do not mind the sound of that. That is my phone. I was just checking on it real quick. Okay, cool. So, we go over to the second car racing game that is on this demo disc, and one that is uh, it's honestly not aged very well. It's Test Drive 5. So, if you don't know what Test Drive 5 is, or Test Drive in general, Test Drive was, like, kind of like the, the, the competitor game to... EA's Need for Speed. Funny enough, Need for Speed, if I remember correctly, was done by people who worked on the original Test Drive games, like the first two. And then I think what happened was there were some disagreements between between um, Accolade and the original team, who I think were known as Ballistic. Or something happened. Something like that. And, and basically... They, they were sent off, and they eventually, years later, went to make Need for Speed with EA. So, uh, the test drive kind of remained dormant for a number of years. Accolade decided to bring it back during the PlayStation 1 era with uh, what you saw, the, the team that you saw there earlier, Pitbull Syndicate, a very unknown UK, uh, very small UK developer at the time. Who, you know, they, they were certainly had, they were certainly, you know, had a lot of aspirations, but you could tell... They, they couldn't light a candle to what EA was doing, and as the age of these games continues to continues to grow, you can really tell just how dated this game is, and just how it just was never gonna let, just never gonna hold up in comparison to the the 1998 Need for Speed offering, which is of course the legendary Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. It's still an interesting game, but yeah, it's. Test Drive 5 was always a distant second. So in this demo, we got two cars. We can use either the Ford Mustang GT428 Cobra Jet or the Dodge Viper. Oh, I'm obviously going to use the Viper because the Viper is a cool car. And, uh... <coughs> <coughs> Thanks, throw. What's interesting, too, this loading screen here, that font there, that graphic for the Viper is in the final game, but... Uh, they, they changed the font, funny enough. Not exactly sure why, but hey. So this is, this. the demo of this game is actually particularly interesting too, because the handling that's in this demo is not, uh, what is not the handling that's in the final game. They changed it for the final game, and for some reason, they 
I'm gonna be totally honest, they made the handling worse. Much worse. I think the demo's handling for this game is so much better. If, the if they left the handling like this for the final game, I think more people would have probably enjoyed it. Because the car feels way more responsive. It's not s sliding everywhere. It, 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 it feels quite decently responsive. They had something decent here, uh, and then they changed it and made it worse. I don't know why they did that. I have no idea why they thought they needed to do that. Maybe they thought they needed to make the game more challenging. I have no idea. But in my opinion, this was what we got here was actually decent enough. They should have left it alone. But they didn't. And it's, you know, I again, I don't I I didn't work at Pitbull. I don't know what what I don't exactly know what their what their reasoning for is. I guess they just thought maybe they they thought they needed to to change it. But, but yeah, personally for me though, I just think they even though this like this like obviously this isn't perfect, but I think if if it was like this and then they just you know made some you know kind of small fixes and stuff, I think this would have been better. I really do, because in the final game, especially the PlayStation One version, because this game was also on PC, it's just too slidey and uh, it's the cars I feel like they're on ice. There's nowhere near as much grip. It's just not as nice. I don't know why. I just, it's one of those things, it's just, it remains, it just, to me, it just remains a mystery. And, you get a, you don't even, what's annoying about this demo, you can't even play the full level of which this is, uh, an area we don't talk about in 2022 right now, but, um, you don't get, you don't even get to do the full level, and then it's like, you're, you know, that's it, and then it just ends the replay. And also, yes, you are seeing that correctly. All of my opponents are, have the exact same wheels as I do. They, uh, they, for whichever car you choose, uh, they tend to, co to use the same wheels as you do. Don't know if they, uh, don't know if Pitbull noticed that or not, but I am not entirely sure. It probably did not matter to them that much. But yeah, you get the idea. It's just a, it's just the replay stuff. So if I press select. Is congratulations, you have finished the Test Drive 5 demo. Woo. And so, bigger jumps, better cars, pure racing mayhem. High resolution graphics mode, <laughs> shortcuts and alternative routes, 28 licensed cars, including 14 modern sports and muscle cars, split screen racing, multi dynamic environment mapping, trademark, night driving with realistic weather. Coming this Christmas. And yes, that sound is very loud. Be glad I be glad I didn't make the, the the game volume overly loud for this video, or else you probably would have had a heart attack. And uh, you know you don't want that. <laughs> Anyways, Legacy of Kane 2 Soul Reaver. I'm really hoping this time around I don't like break it like I did last time. Okay, so L and X is a high jump. Get free look with the shoulder buttons. Oh, or with both shoulder buttons, you can rotate with the individuals, crouch at once, sneak. Okay. I'm just hoping I don't make an ass of myself. Because last time, like I said, last time I played this, I managed to glitch out of the game. I don't know how I did it, or how I, or why I did it. It's too many years ago, but yeah. Oh, you, you even get a control scheme here in case you uh, missed it. So this, which is, you know, it's funny because this, this would actually be more detailed. Nice graphic, by the way, for the controller. And as you can see, this was made by uh, Crystal Dynamics, who made Gex. In fact, Gex even appears in their logo. Oh, excuse me. Also, I've already been recording for an hour. It's easy for me to lose track of time with some of this stuff. But hey, that's, that's just how it'd be. I do like, by the way, that you, like, you start, start, like, in, in the water. Everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite bit about games. I'm gonna just do a quick look around to see if there's, like, anything real quick. I'm gonna probably have a guess and say no, because, you know, 
you, you, you do start here, and I'm, I would be thinking that there's probably a reason you'd be starting there like that, because, well, you know. And yeah, this game, the frame rate, uh, not, not the happiest. Okay, there we go. Get it. You have to do the high jump to get up there. Oh, pfft. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, some of these controls are a little sen. I started to realize that some of these games, their controls are a little sensitive. I could have done Metal Gear Solid if I wasn't so quick or and it was so sudden to react. But it's fine. We've still beat it, or at least really still got to an end point. I have a feeling I could pick that up. Yes, I can. Yes, that's what I meant to do. Oh, cool. Okay, so he he'll he'll even swim with it. That's that's good. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to high jump there, aren't I? Hey, get out of the water. Thank you. Man, I am so glad that some of these... Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> this is... Well, this is annoying. I am uh, making an ass of myself. I, have, I will say, camera-wise, I am so glad we, uh... We've gotten better. Oh, my God. I, I promise you I am not trying to do this on purpose. I'm just bad. Okay. Okay, now, up. Thank you. The only problem is he does... Cr L1's the crouch button, so... Yeah, he stops, so... I don't know. Or maybe I'd have to, like, do the high jump and then kind of wing my way down, maybe? Yeah, I did not play this game growing up, so... Oh, dear. Okay, yeah, there we go. We're gonna make it now. Oh, I stuck it into the wall. Just fists, fists, fists. Does he ever go down? Oh, I'm holding him, I think. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh! Well, that's... Well, that's very good. Couldn't... I couldn't actually tell that there was a... A, a, a runoff bit there where I could... Fall. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. I don't even know if I can get this, though. You know what? Forget you. I'm, I'm gonna move on. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's another one. Give me. Okay. Yeah, what I don't like about this is you have to be in a very specific spot, and... So, you have to kind of, like, be right up to, like, the, the side of it. I don't, I don't know what was stopping me right for a second. I know people are nostalgic about these games, but let me tell you. There are some things about platformer games that, uh, have really improved a lot over the years. So yeah, I don't know, like... I feel like I'm supposed to do something else, because... They take quite a they they take quite a lot of uh of hits. So I don't so I don't know. Oh, that's it. There is not much to that demo. Okay. Um sure. Available January 1999 it says. And a whole bunch of stuff there. Fall beyond blood, hail the souls of your enemies, 3D streaming technology, create seamless 
it's already gone. <laughs> Maybe I should have started reading all that as soon as it appeared and not just kind of waited a moment. Look, doing videos isn't the easiest job. <laughs> Anyways, Cool Borders 3. As I mentioned before, I believe this is the first of the the Cool Borders games that was uh, published by 989 Studios. I don't think I was very good at it then. I don't imagine I'm going to be very good at it now. A lot of things you can use the, uh, the X buttons with. Whoa, taunts. And flips. Add another uh, extra screen there. But yep, I was correct there. See, there's the 989 Studios, and we get like a little little disc that tells us how much is loaded, which is actually kind of neat. 989 Studios, Idle Minds. That those would, Idle Minds would have been who developed it. And then we got some butter. We got a Butterfinger sponsor. It's actually feel. I'm gonna be totally honest. This kind of feels a little stiff. Oh no. Yeah, I'm not. Hey, I landed a flip. Nice. Oh my god. Never really. I never. I could never really get into these snowboarding games. They weren't. They just weren't for me. Like, I know they're technically, it's technically racing and, just, and whatnot, but, you know, I don't know. A lot of them feel just really weird to me. Something I couldn't get, something I, I don't think I could really ever, I really ever got, oh, pfft. something I don't think I really ever got used to. At least I'm, like, not, at least I'm doing okay. I should have looked how you can grind those. I'm not I'm not too worried about that, though, to be honest. Yeah, I did another flip. Oh god, I'm stuck on the I was stuck on the log for a moment there. Also, yes, the music is very quiet. I did not turn it down before playing this. It's just how it is. Oh. You hit the tree. Why did you why did you do that? I don't even know where the first guy is now. Oh, oh come on, dude. Wow, that's a easy ten points. Face plant to the finish. Yeah. And that's it. Thirty amazing runs of five huge mountains, six events per mountain, including big air, border cross down oh. Twenty three authentic snowboards, choose from Burton Ride and Swatch. Twenty world class snowboards, two player split screen racing. Tons of awesome tricks, spins, flips, grabs, and calm. Nations and up to thousands of trick possibilities. Are you sure about that? Is it really thousands? It might seem a bit I don't know why that kind of seems like an exaggeration to me. Someone, please feel free to correct me if that's actually true or not. Okay, now we get to the video section. The the next four are all videos. So starting with NFL Game Day ninety nine.
Dick Emberg, along with my partner, Phil Sand. This is a big game, Dick, and both teams are ready. That must have been so early on, because I noticed it didn't even have the 989 Sports logo, so I guess the the design was not finalized. And for people wondering, by the way, the 989 name, I think that was the building number of the studio they operated in in California at the time. I think that was the reason behind the 989, if I remember correctly. But yeah, they must have not finalized the logo, because they showed the cover at the end there, and there was no... The, the familiar logo was not present there, so I guess it just wasn't f finished yet. Huh. Anyways, NHL Faceoff 99 video. Same deal there. No, no, uh, 989 finalized logo. I guess just at the time wasn't a thing. Uh, but it was a thing, of course. One, one of the uh, the classic Nickelodeon cartoons, one that people have very fond memories of, of course, is Rugrats. how they say only on the PlayStation game console. It's like, the, it's like, uh, I mean, it's like we were watching it on a PlayStation. You didn't, uh, it's like, <laughs> you think people are not going to recognize what exactly a PlayStation is? Maybe I'm looking into this a little too much. Probably am. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, video down for Parasite Eve. to live silently within our bodies. It seems that the parasites have only to live among us. Or do 
do they? I certainly have a lot of questions, and I don't think a single one of them can be answered on what the fuck I just watched there. <laughs> Anyways, I got two more demos to go through. The first one here is Ninja. I don't know what this is. I don't I like honestly. This game is so forgettable that I didn't even remember. I didn't even remember this game being on the demo from all the years ago when I played this. So when I was looking over the list, uh, when I started this video, I was like, oh yeah, that's, uh, I guess a thing. So this, the full name is Ninja Shadow of Darkness. Can I... Okay, it's not a thing with the... Oh, maybe it is. Oh, okay. I think I just had maybe had to press start, I guess. I was thinking I wasn't getting any control for a second. Be control. I don't have control. Oh, 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 it's just playing itself. You know what? Play for play for me. Maybe it's actually just a rolling demo, and I didn't. No, if it was a rolling demo, it would it wouldn't give me a control scheme. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's just I'll let the game just play itself. <laughs> Is it the, the rolling demo will probably do a better job than I ever could. Citation needed on that. <laughs> I like how the rolling demo you get so you're getting okay, buddy, you're getting really close to that fire pit. You might not want to catch on fire. Was this, like, based off an IP of any sorts? Like, does anyone know? I feel like this, like, especially because it's just called Ninja. I feel like this has to be based off an IP of some sorts. I could be entirely wrong, though. But it really does feel like this is, this has to be based off an IP of some sorts. Like, maybe I'm just wrong. Who knows? But it really does give off the vibe that this was supposed to be based off of an existing IP at the time. A 
also the early the, the early days when blood was when blood was defined by just pixels. Look, things were primitive back then. They had a they had a they had to show off an interpretation of blood somehow, and we were fine with this. Hell, I'm still fine with it. I don't. I'm. It doesn't. You know, it get, it gets the point across. I will say, for being a rolling demo here, this is this actually. Oh, <laughs> I think I just spoke too soon. Oh, is it just gonna go? Is it just gonna go back to the uh, title screen? It is. Yep, and I still don't have any control. The control scheme. My controls are gone again. Switch to digital. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that keeps happening. It, yeah, it's just gonna keep looping. So we gotta do another restart. Oh, at least the, at least that there was a demo, uh, a thing there to show off the game. So that's fine. I'll, I can work with that. Anyways, next up we have is WWF Warzone. Now, I think it was pretty obvious there was gonna be a WWF game on one of these at some point. It was a wrestling during the late '90s was probably the hottest it ever was. You just, it was everywhere. People just loved it. It was, it was a big deal. And yeah, WWF at the time, just they were on absolute fire. Just producing stuff that people still talk about to this day. Unfortunately, Warzone's not very good. <laughs> it's really not. In terms of a proper PlayStation classic, uh, that you'd have to go to the two SmackDown games for that. Which came out, uh, I think, 2000, I believe? And yes, it is quiet. And I promise this is not just a video. Because otherwise, why would it give me all those controls? These, the lyrics, by the way, for the, are the, it's, it's so funny about this song. I don't think the lyrics were ever made official, were ever officially released for this game. Or for this game, for this song, which is Thorn in, Thorn in Your Eye. So I think people just kind of had to figure out what the fuck they were, and for years no one really knew. So, uh, as a result, the stuff that was around for a long time were very, very wrong. Anyways, so we got our one player. People ask me what Austin 316 means. You're fixed to find out firsthand, son. It's going to be a cold day in hell before I lose to a piece of trash like you. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. You want to talk about setting up their setting up their their seeds in a room where there is no soundproofing whatsoever? That's it right there. Just the amount of st I was of echo and Stone Cold's voice there is just ridiculous. So I so yeah, I'm gonna guess I'm probably playing as Stone Cold. I don't think I'm gonna be doing very good here. Don't think I did the first time. Don't think I'm gonna do the second time. Yeah, I'm I think I definitely am Stone Cold. I will say, by the way, this is quite a lengthy demo, too, but because it's giving us 10 minutes. 10. 10 whole minutes. I'm gonna at least get a few moves in, which I am doing. At least, again, I, yeah, I am definitely Stone Steve Austin here. This Yeah, this is going well. This just feels very, very... <laughs> yeah, just kick him down. Yeah, take take some kicks. Yeah, I don't think people were chanting HBK circa... Um, around the time of this demo. He was supposed to be a heel. Oh, I finally, I finally ducked one. This, yeah, I can tell just playing this, this feels very clunky. Very 
awkward. I imagine people probably back then figured out how... How to play this. I didn't. Yeah, I'm not trying to win the match. I'm trying to at least do things. <laughs> They're just scream. He's just screaming and stuff. I think that is that is immediately kind of funny. Yeah, okay, I think I've had enough. I don't like that control scheme. It's it's it feels very clunky and I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just very luckily getting shots and uh yeah. I think I'm gonna stick to some of the later games. I think there's a reason why people weren't exactly huge on Warzone. Like look, you can even see like the footage there. The guy's just was just doing kicks for a bit. So let me look at this real quick again. Yeah, you have your punch, your kick, your tie-up, and your block. Like, what else was I supposed to really do? Anyways, I won't worry about it, because we're going to move on to the next thing, which is another video, because there's only two videos left. The first one being for PlayStation Underground. Call 1-800-983-ZONE. Get four issues, eight CDs for only $29.95. Get it today. All right. And with that, that just leaves one last video. And that's going to be it for the episode. And that is about some threads. Not gonna lie, that PlayStation backpack would have been pretty cool to have as a kid. But, yep, that's gonna do it though for today's episode. There's not much else to show, not left else to show. We have Volume 8 has a pretty a pretty good selection of games. A lot of like really good stuff. Some stuff that, you know, people don't, some people won't really care about, but there's a lot of good in here, like Spyro, Medieval, Gran Turismo, Metal Gear Solid. You know, there's some, there's some good stuff on this disc. And of course, you know, this was, I think, really around the time frame when Sony was just really starting to fire on all cylinders with the PlayStation. Like, this was, like, its peak years. Like, just 97 to 2000. That was, like, the PlayStation was just... It was the product, I think. It was just one of... It was just that good. But... That's going to do it for today's video. Next time, we'll be taking a look at Volume 9. So stay tuned for that. I promise it will not be months from now. I will have Volume 9 out much sooner. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to check out my links down below. And I hope to see you all on the next demo video.